Hey everybody, welcome back to Festool Shop Talk Podcast. We just wrapped up on Instagram Live with Jason Bent from Bent's Woodworking. He is an incredible social media guru in the woodworking realm. We realize how he got started and what he does and how he does it. It is so insightful, you got to give this one a listen. So, hey, don't forget, you got to subscribe to his channels, at Ben's Woodworking, whether it's YouTube or Instagram, Facebook, and he has his own website. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Festool Shop Talk. Cool. So, we're on the Festool USA uh, homepage on Instagram, and we're starting our, uh, the TSC 55 launch party with you, Jason, but it's also... One of the beginning, I think you are episode number two of Festool Shop Talk. So we're really excited about this. Um, what I'm going to do, everybody, is I introduce that this is Jason Bent from Bent's Woodworking. I've known Jason for a few years now. And what I'd like to do is have Jason tell you guys all a little bit about himself. Okay, so uh, as I was saying before, so I'm actually in the Army. I've been in the Army for just over 18 years. Um, this is actually where I'm going to be retiring at here in Indiana. And so for me, I started Ben's Woodworking, uh, which started out as a custom. Actually, I take that back. My wife asked me to build a table. I built a table. I was hooked. Uh, I sold my bass boat that I had at the time, which I absolutely loved. Like that was my woodworking back then. Um, and I just got obsessed with woodworking and I got obsessed with tools and learning new techniques. And so then I started to build uh, furniture for clients. And as I started to build furniture for clients, then, um, you know, my shop started to grow because I invested all of my money back into my shop. And then that's kind of when I started to go down the, the festival rabbit hole um, and overdosing on the green Kool-Aid, you know? So, <laughs> oh, I know. Then uh, one day I just said, you know what? I've kind of built the shop up the way that I wanted it to. And, and YouTube was a, a huge contributing factor into me growing uh, in, in woodworking and, and learning a lot of stuff. So I said, hey, I like to teach, why not start making some videos? And I started making YouTube videos on it and I, I enjoy teaching. Um, I think it's, it's something that I do fairly well just because of my time as a drill sergeant. Um, so I just started doing that and I kind of gave up on doing client work um, and it's just turned into to all of this and, and it has been great and that's kind of why I am doing what I am doing now. Very, very cool. You sold your bass boat? I did. Wow, you're going to get another one? I absolutely want to get another one. <laughs> I just found out not too long ago you were a fisherman. Too cool. Oh, yeah. You've been using Festool for a while, yeah, haven't you? Uh, yeah, a few years now. Yep. Uh, I am looking in the background of your shop. Is that the new TSC 55? It okay. is. Wow. Always cool. in easy reach. Yeah, it's probably been it's it's not and this isn't just a plug because it's the, the launch party, but it is hands down the most used tool uh, that I've used on this miter saw station by far. Um, I used it to break down all of the sheet goods, everything uh, for this entire project. So it's I've been using it a lot. Way cool. So what uh, that miter saw station, what saw you got in there? Capex. <laughs> that's what i call a loaded question baby yeah actually I mean, pretty much anything on the wall behind me you know is, is very similar to the stuff that's in your shop there yeah i imagine actually uh i've been watching that build on your stories and it's pretty cool boy you built that really quick huh uh so it's funny i always get this a lot of people are always like man i can't believe how fast you work i actually always think that i work very slowly um but i guess I don't know. I guess it's because, you know, comparisons of like, okay, if I'm going to go in there just on a Saturday and Sunday and build something, it might take me two months to do it. Um, as opposed to, you know, if I'm throwing together some cabinets and I can get a lot done in two days and then the next night I'm out here and the next night I'm out here. But I always feel like I'm, I'm dragging on projects. Um, but I mean, overall, I think it went, I went, it went fairly quickly. Yeah. You know, I've been, uh, everybody's been calling out here at uh, Festool all the plywood I had in the background. I just, uh, the last two days, I assembled all 30 cabinets. So you're going to see the new cis wall going in pretty quick. 
Oh, nice. I feel like I haven't moved quick enough. I know where you're coming from. Okay, so you have a, if I remember right, correct me if I'm wrong, you have a 55 and a 75 corded version, right? I do. Yeah. Okay. So you know what's going on. And you were part of our test program. We sent out a TS-55 CK. God, I keep forgetting these model numbers. Yeah. And so let me ask you, what is the differentiator between this new saw and the saws you've been using? Easily the blade. Huh. Do you think you're cutting faster? 100%. No kidding, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's very cut and dry for me. It's very easy. This thing has exceeded every expectation that I had. Um, I 100% am going to be getting rid of the TS-55 the TS corded. And honestly, I, I'm considering uh, doing away with the TS-75. And it's not because... <coughs> It's not because I don't like them. I just, I have no need for the battery opera or the uh, corded platform, especially with the 55 now, um, because the battery life, which is, I'm sure is another topic that we'll, we'll discuss, but I mean, I'm, I'm reaching for that constantly because it's just so much easier. It cuts faster. Um, it, it's absolutely incredible. And the TS 75 for me, I'm not cutting things that require that much depth really at this point. Um, you know, when I was doing client work, it's a little bit different. Uh, so I could absolutely uh, get by with, with just that. And it is, it's just phenomenal. Uh, I, I did a test cut. Uh, I did this on my Instagram. I was trying to figure out, and this, this is dealing directly with the blades. I was trying to figure out what would be a really, really good way to test this and not only test this, but also compare it to the corded version. Uh, versus, or, you know, the full curve from Festival versus the thin curve. And I had this big piece of babinga in the shop. And I said, well, this is definitely the hardest wood that I've ever used myself. And it's the hardest wood that I have in the shop. Why not mill some of this up and try to do some test cuts? And uh, I, I think I remember telling you this. I actually, initially, because I was a little bit nervous, I actually did the first cut at half the depth, yeah. ran it through, and then would go back and do a full cut to complete the cut. So I'd make, it's an eight quarter babinga. So I would make the cut in two passes. Well, when I right. did that, not only did it not bog down at all, like you didn't hear anything. I was like, you know what? I, I know I can make a full cut. So I went back over and I did the full cut with a thin curve. And then I did the same test with my uh, TS-55 with a full curve. And I, I only made it like six or seven inches uh, with the standard cross cut blade. Now, and I know that that's not the, the blade that, you know, Festival would obviously recommend to do a rip cut on eight quarter Babinga. But well, I thought that being able to use both the rip blade and the cross cut blade on both saws mm -hmm. would really be able to showcase the difference. And I was 100% right. Like it, it, is, it, it gave me the results exactly what I, what I expected and exactly what I needed uh, to see. And I just think that that was a really good test. And I mean, you can listen to it even. I put all four videos in a row uh, and labeled it down in uh, the description, you can listen to it and yep. hear just how how ef efficient and effective that saw is compared to the corded version with a full kerf blade. So the thin kerf blades for me is by far uh, the biggest discriminating factor on that saw. Same. Uh, when I first got one, I think it was last October, and everybody was talking about the kickback stop. And it's fantastic. I mean, it works. Uh, but for me, it was the blade. And I just, I just broke down 16 sheets of that pre-finished maple plywood without skipping a beat. And what blew me away is I'd like to compare apples to uh, apples. The, the, the runtime on that 5.2 Bluetooth battery blew me away and I'm not supposed to be blown away, but you get more efficiency with that thin curve blade out of that battery. And yeah. uh, I was amazed with it. I think I did all 16 sheets and I got like five or six. I, I have it written down somewhere. I took a picture of it. And I, I, I like out of the 16 sheets, I think I went through two batteries. That's it. So that, that was another test that I wanted to do because I want to do a, a, you know, a full video on YouTube, but I really wanted to be able to give this thing 
uh, a really good test and a run for its money so I could, you know, adequately discuss versus what I've been using. Unfortunately, I never used the TSC 55. Um, but so this is the first uh, battery operated track saw that I've used. One of the tests that I wanted to run, and I, I believe you and I spoke about this, is I actually wanted to go buy a sheet of three quarter inch plywood and just do one inch, uh, eight foot long uh, rips and see just how many cuts. And then I was like, well, you know, that's, that's kind of a big waste of money to just go break down a sheet of plywood in, into a bunch of inch long strips. So I put it to the test on the Meyer saw station before I told you I cut everything um, with this track saw. I broke down every sheet, every cabinet, every drawer, all the boxes. I broke everything down into the sizes that I needed using the track saw. And I made it all the way to the very last cut on the very last drawer front and the battery died halfway through the cut. So, so cool. for multiple days, multiple cuts, no bit, no issues with the battery. And then it just, it just, it was done. And I put them on the charger. I put new batteries on and I made my last cut and I was done with breaking everything down. So that with me, I've always been very hesitant and, and, uh, I've talked about this a lot. I've always been very hesitant on battery platforms. Sure. And my mindset behind it was always, well, if I, here's a really good example. If I'm plugging in the dust extraction to that, which I do do, uh, I, I do use that a lot, right? But I've been yep. testing out both, you know, with the bag and with the dust extraction. And if I'm hooking up the hose, it makes sense to hook up the power cord. So why do I need to go cordless? Right. And then I'm like, oh, and then if the battery dies, you got to make sure you have batteries that are charged and all this stuff. Right. This track saw, uh, not to mention any other, you know, battery operated, like the drills, all that stuff. I, I might charge my drills like once a month. Um, this completely took that out for me. I have absolutely zero concern, zero wonder. I know exactly how long it's going to last. It'll get me through two, three, four days of me doing heavy work in here. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, having spare batteries. But the thing that ended up that I love the most about it is now I don't have that power cable grabbing on stuff. Right. Because the hose doesn't grab on things nearly as much as that power cable does. Sure. So that's been another uh, a, a big difference for me is, you know, any, any reservations that I had about going to a battery operated machine are completely gone now. Completely. Matter of fact, uh, some of the stuff I have, uh, wow. you know, like my jigsaw. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's, I want to switch that over to, to a cord or cordless. Yeah. Non-corded. Huh, man. Hey, when I see you this coming up weekend, I owe you 10 bucks for that beautiful, uh, uh, that beautiful recommendation for the TSC. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. You know what? Here at Festool, Jace, I'll tell you right now, we're, we get giddy with these tools. We use them every day. But to hear it from you, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree. I have a, a TS55 uh, EQ at home, and I'm actually thinking of uh, getting a TSC 55K, and it's because of the blade. Oh, yeah. It just It's quicker. You know? It's just the, that <laughs> panther blade or the ripping blade on there? Oh. <laughs> that thing is insane. And it gives you a great finish side of the cut as well. Um, yeah. I'm just blown away. And at 45, too. It's, you know, and I'm preaching to the choir. I know I am. Okay. Hey, I, I know you have a bit of fest tool, but uh, where did you, I'm going to ask you a few questions here. Okay. On the topic of the uh, 55, if you don't mind. Hey, where did you, when did you start or how were you brought into the fest tool system? What, what happened? What turned you on to it? Um, Honestly, when I first started woodworking, I didn't even know what Festool was. And I think that that's most people's um, experience. I'd never heard of Festool. Uh, I'd never been to like a legitimate woodworking store. I started like most other people, you know, going to Lowe's and Home Depot. So uh, the tool brands that I thought were the tool brands were the ones that were sold at Lowe's and Home Depot. Um, and then I started going to Highland Woodworking uh, in Atlanta. Um, and also the woodcraft of Atlanta. And I saw these big booths, you know, and it said festival this and had all these tools. And then I went and looked at the price and I was like, nope, see ya. And I would walk over <laughs> and ask the guys, they're like, where's your DeWalt and where's your Bosch and, and where's all this other stuff? And, you know, of course they don't, they don't have those products uh, there 
for the most part. And so then I started doing a little bit of research and started watching some YouTube videos to try to find out about it. And then one day I finally just got uh, Highland Woodworking is a, a fantastic festival dealer. Oh, um, sure. They have one of the biggest selections I've seen and a very helpful staff. And I went in there one day and I said, you know, I, I kind of want to get something just to see what it's like. And the logical uh, thing for me to buy at the time, I figured, was uh, a random orbital sander. And that's when I bought the uh, ETS-125. Ah. And I actually went there with the intention of buying the ETS EC, but I was able to test both sanders in the store. Huh. And uh, then, they, you know, they hooked it up to their, their CT backs that they had there and they were, put a little piece of wood on the MFT, you know, and they're like, yeah, go ahead and sand this. And they marked some, some lines on it. And, and I used the ETS EC. And initially my first reaction is I was so used to the, you know, DeWalt style, Porter oh. Cable style, Bosch style. Yep. I started using that and, and I, I just felt like, you know, the way that it sat is something that I just wasn't used to. And I said, well, what about that sander right there? And it was the ETS-125. And, and at the time, it was the cheapest uh, sander, you know, still to this day is. Um, I think it was $199 back then. I said, you know what? Maybe this isn't a bad way to get into this. So I, I used it. I just liked the way that it felt. I bought that sander. The guy talked to me into buying a CT MIDI. Oh. Um, Went home, used it on a project that afternoon. The very next day, I went and bought a track saw. And then a week later, I bought the Domino and, and the k And <laughs> I got to interrupt. You just said that, and Chris is shaking his nod in his head behind you. Yeah. yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, my, boy, do I have a similar story, too. I'll tell you someday about it. Huh. I, didn't, I didn't believe the price. I bought the track saw. And then I went back and bought another 5K worth of uh, Festool about. Oh, yeah. And it's funny. You know, I get messages constantly from people. Cause, you know, everybody knows that I'm a Festool junkie. And, I, and I've, I've invested a lot of money on Festool, just like you have. And after I had that first experience at that dealer, went home, used the tools, saw a drastic difference it just solidified it for me. And legitimately ever since that day, because when I looked at the tracks, I'm like, man, that is a lot of money for a, what at the time, what I was looking at as a, a circular saw. <laughs> the very next day I went back and bought it and I've had zero reservations on, uh, you know, price of the tool because it's so much more than just the, the tool and the name, right? Right. It's how everything works together. And that, as soon as, because I, I didn't know that at first. When I bought the sander and the, and the dust extractor, I didn't know that that stuff worked together. I didn't know that it was all meant to be a system. I just thought they made really cool tools. Good. And then I bought the track saw. And then I bought the domino. And then it's just, it just kept going. Then I bought the, you know, the router. And I bought this, and I bought that, and I'm like, holy cow, all of these things work together, and I don't have to be looking for this or looking for that to make sure that this fits to this. And so I, I haven't even looked back. I mean, it's, I'll pay whatever money uh, the tool costs because I know that there's a lot more that goes with it. And then the warranty on top of that. Yeah. Oh. That's oh, something I... a lot of people fail to, fail to realize. You know, they're like, oh, I can just go to the store and buy, buy X brand. Well, yeah, you can, but you're paying a premium for a reason. And there's other things that go into it just other than the name. It's, it's the company. It's, it's how they back their tools. Yes. Someone, someone met, uh, messaged me last night. I'm trying to remember what tool it was. My first thing I always do is how old is it? And he said, like a year old, I go send it in for repair. Yeah. We're going to fix it for you. No ifs, ands, or buts. And it's an industrial warranty. And I, you know, I look at this, and I looked at the system early on in like 2003, and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, man. This warranty's three years? I loved it. And for me, it was one of the things that I really enjoyed about it. But here's the difference between you and I. You bought a MIDI with your ETS-125. Yeah, they tried to sell me a dust extractor for my tracks on. I said, no way, you got enough of my money already. <laughs> <laughs> but next time I went in there, um, I tried a sander and they turned the variable suction down mm -hmm. and the sander started to float and i was like oh i'm sold on that that'll help reduce swirl marks so yeah yeah it's similar stories it's pretty cool i think most people do yeah i think so you started out building for 
you know, the missus, and then it ended up being commissioned work, right? Oh, yeah. You still doing commissioned work? No, I haven't done a commission P. I mean, I've built things for like friends, small things here and there. Um, but I don't, if the right project comes along, then yes, I will do it. And speaking of that, I'm actually getting ready to do one. Um, but that's, uh, that's something with, you know, Hartzell Hardwoods, and it's actually a family member uh, of Hartzell. And the opportunity presented itself, and I want to do something to help them out. And so uh, I'm going to be building a, a table for, for one of the family members. So I wouldn't really call that a commission piece because it's not, you know, like a traditional build that I would do. Um, but for me, the, the, the projects all have to do with, if I was going to take a commission piece, it's all based around content. You know, if, if, if I have the time and mm -hmm. I think it's a piece of content that I could make beneficial for other people and would be interesting, then yes, I, I would be interested in doing it. But for the most part, uh, you know, I just kind of, I just kind of gave up on all that and just, you know, I just like to build what I want to build. And I like to build things my audience wants to know. And uh, it's just been a lot of fun, a lot it's less stressful. It seems like you're a gifted educator. And I guess that probably stems from your army background, isn't it? Yeah, they learned to be real good. <laughs> so I, I, I can't imagine you being a drill instructor. I'll, I'll show you this weekend. Huh? I'll show you this weekend. Oh, no. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I can do push-ups, sir. Yeah, you don't want to poke the bear. No, <laughs> Too cool. Huh. That was the best job I ever had. And that, that is the biggest contributing factor to what I am doing now. Um, because when you go to be a drill sergeant, you're dealing with a bunch of kids, for the most part, from all walks of life, from all over at all different educational levels. So when you go to drill sergeant school, the thing that they teach you the most is multiple different ways. Uh, and Ben, Ben Marshall's in here. Uh, he, he could tell you the same thing. He was a drill sergeant as well. They teach you multiple different ways to instruct so you're able to reach that broad audience. And so I took that. And, you know, some people will say that I talk way too much in my videos and that I could cut a lot of it out. But, you know, to me, I don't care. I, I want to explain this in a way that not only the beginner could understand, but mm -hmm. somebody who has a lot of experience could understand or maybe find something or I explain something in a way or the why, why I'm doing something. Um, and that's just real big in the army. You know, here's, how, here's what needs to get done. Here's how it's done. And this is why you're doing it. And I just tried to take that and impart that into my videos. And so far, I think it's been pretty successful. And, and that's kind of how I try, uh, try to tailor my videos. Okay, so you were doing commission work. How did you get involved? I mean, it's easy, but how did you get involved with social media? And who was your biggest influence to get you going in uh, social media? Um, so how I got started is when I started my business, I did like I think most people do. And I went on Facebook Marketplace and I put an ad saying I built custom furniture. Uh, and then one day, Nicole, my wife, um, she said, hey, why don't you let me make you an Instagram? And I'm like, what's Instagram? And so she made me an Instagram and I, I said, hey, this is cool. Now I can have one place where I can post all of my finished shots. And then when I go sit down with a client, I can say, hey, check out my Instagram. Here's the last 10 things that I've built. Um, or hey, here's an example of what you're talking about. Hey, here's a, a color, whatever. Yeah. Well, then I quickly realized that uh, people were really engaged with each other on Instagram. So then I started getting excited about it and I realized it was more of a community. And then that one day made me go, you know what? Why not share some stuff on YouTube? You know, yeah. why not share how I got started in woodworking? Uh, and so that's how, it, that's what it, my first video was. I just took my phone and I propped it up against the Microsoft station. I hit record and it's a very awkward, you know, 30 plus minute video of me talking about in the same spot with poor lighting and poor video quality, you know, how I got woodworking. And I posted that video and I was like, this is pretty cool. I really enjoyed doing that. And then I just started trying to find different things that I could do videos. Um, and then, you know, I finally had a video that did really well. And it's funny because it was the first instructional video that I posted. It was on how to make shaker style doors, um, just huh. using your, your, you know, your table saw. Yeah. And I started the video off by saying, this is my first attempt at doing an instructional video. So it's probably gonna suck. 
but we're going to do it anyways. <laughs> and that video totally changed my channel. And it also changed what I was going to do, you know, up until now, which I want to do instructional content. I want to teach people. And that is exactly uh, why I did that. Now, biggest influence. Yeah. Um, for me early on, guys like uh, Jay Bates, yep. um, Mark Spagnolo, you know, people that were doing this for years, they yep. were the videos that I was watching. DIY Pete, he's actually the very first video on woodworking that I ever watched. And his table is the first project that I ever did based on his YouTube video. Um, I'm sorry? DIY Pete? DIY Pete, yep. Oh. Yeah, he built, he did a farmhouse table and Nicole actually is the one that found the video and said, why don't you watch this? Wow. So I did. And luckily I got to meet him um, early last year and uh, I actually said, thank you. You know, I told him, you know, thank you. It's because of your video that is the reason why I started going down this path uh, of woodworking. And so I would say those three, Steve Ramsey, you know, as a beginner, um, I found Wood his videos extremely valuable. Woodworking for mere mortals, right? Correct. Yeah. The that's cool. See, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm catching on to this uh, social media stuff. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Too cool. So those are good. Those, that's cool. And you would watch those videos and kind of tailor how you would do your videos. But, uh, for, the then, video, for the video influence, I don't really have uh, uh, a... <coughs> like, I didn't really ever look at anybody's videos at the time and go, that's how I want to be doing my videos. I just naturally started because I'm comfortable talking and doing things. And once I had that video do well, I was like, this is what I need to be doing. Um, and so I kind of just roll with that. I try not to, you know, there are certain things about people's videos. When I first started on, on social media, I'm like anybody else. Like I'm using whatever equipment I think I need or I think is best. And the quality is not that good. And you don't know anything about audio. And then, as time goes on, you start to learn those things. So I have seen things in other people's videos, like transitions that they use and all this other stuff. And, you know, I, I've learned from that, but it, in terms of like the style of video, I don't really know if I have anybody that comes to mind where I'm like, I'm trying to make videos like the style that they make. You know what I mean? Sure. Huh. Huh. Okay. Um, let me see. I have another question here for you. Um, and I asked this uh, in the first podcast. Um, you know, we're just coming through this last year of 2020, right? And the pandemic and everything. What is, give me a silver lining. Give me something good that has come across. It, it was a trying year, I would imagine, for you, right? Yeah. But what, what was a, maybe a silver lining that you take out of the pandemic year? I have, I personally have several that I'll share with you someday because this, I mean, Festool Live for me, we started Festool, right. just went gangbusters. Tell me a little bit about 2020 and how do you get through it? Uh, well, so the obvious uh, positive part was I got to spend a lot more time with my son and my wife. There you um, but when it relates to what I do and what I plan on doing in the future, uh, for me, it's very easy. It, it gave me an opportunity to see what Ben's woodworking could be when I retire. Ah, gotcha. Because for a very long time, just like you, yep. teleworking. Um, and really not even so much teleworking, like everybody was kind of just quarantined doing their own thing. Well, what did that do? It gave me an opportunity to be in the shop constantly and, and go for things that I've always wanted to go for and I haven't had the time to do. Um, the downside coming out of that is now that I've, you know, ramped back up at work and it, it's more of a normal thing now. I mean, not more of a normal thing. It is a normal thing now. Um, I obviously have to readjust what I'm doing and start focusing on the things that I really want to have done in two years when I, when I do retire. So, um, but absolutely it gave me an opportunity to see, you know, what I'm capable of or what Ben's woodworking is capable of upon retirement. Hmm. You know, I've been, uh, talking to you now for about a half hour, Jason, and I haven't seen your head tilt to the left or right. There it is! You <laughs> silver! Ben, is. ben actually commented on there. He said, what's that silver thing that's behind your head? And while you were talking, I was going to go. <laughs> that is so funny. 
So when, what happened that you got that YouTube silver? What are you going to do to get there? What happened? Uh, to get it, you just you have to get 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Um, How many you have now? Uh, 125, somewhere around there. That's amazing. Oh, close to it. Are you, okay, oh, I got to be careful with this, but are you shocked? It happened so quick, right? Are you surprised or was um, it calculated or? Well, surprised, yes, because when I started on all this and I knew I was going to get serious about social media, a goal of mine was, I figure, there's Ben, I figure if I can... Um, Hit a hundred thousand subscribers, and this is this is back when I thought that you know the numbers were the most important thing, which you know they're not. Um, but back then, I was like, if I can hit a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube, and I can hit fifty thousand followers on Instagram, you know, maybe I could actually do this as a business, the social media thing, when I re retired. Well, then I hit those numbers, and so now it's like I don't have numbers in mind at all for by the time I retire. Now it's just other things that I want to do. Um, and in terms of speed, I definitely wouldn't say that compared to a lot of other people on the platform, it's definitely not fast. Um, but I'm not concerned about, you know, growing a certain speed um, to any certain number, right? Sure. It's, I'm in, a, I'm in a particular niche. Uh, I do videos that I think will be helpful and that I think are, are good. Um, and because of that, you know, not to mention, you know, just alone, the tools that I use alone will automatically uh, filter a lot of people out uh, just because, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have this common misconception that, you know, I can't do that if I don't have that tool. And that's unfortunate, but, um, you know, that I'm just, I'm really not too concerned about it. I'm, I'm happy with the growth. It's been fairly consistent, yeah. um, but it isn't, it isn't my driving factor. You know, the size of my audience is not my driving factor. It's the content and the quality of content, right? Right. I, Getting stuff like that is cool, right? And I put it up there because I love looking at it every day. It was an accomplishment for me, right? That when I set out on this, I was like, I want to get that. But what means more to me is the messages that I get on a regular basis that say, hey, I just wanted to let you know, I saw your video on this and it pushed me over the edge to buy that tool and I'm so glad that I did, I love it. Hey, I watched your video on how to do this and because of that, I was able to tackle this big project in my house and I saved thousands of dollars and now I love woodworking. Yep. Um, those are the kind of messages that I like. And that's why I'm, why I'm in the social media thing. It's not because of all the other stuff. It's because I enjoy the interaction with the people and knowing that I'm actually making a positive impact on them. Yeah. That's so, so cool. Okay. So just to wrap up, I got two more questions here. Okay. Um, what is you, I'm going to bring it back to Festool. I got to do it. Which uh, is I, all you ever want to do is talk about Festool. Well, <laughs> What's your favorite festival accessory? Accessory? Accessory. Ooh. Would the Vaxis be considered an accessory? That's a tool. Dang it. But that's good because a lot of people think, oh, it's a, it's a clamp, which it is, but it's actually you got a serial number, so we consider it a tool. Okay, so if I have to break it down to an accessory and not a tool it's one of two things believe it or not the little scraper that comes with the contouro i love that that, that is so cool i do too <laughs> and then also the uh edge sander attachment for the ets 125 i think is a wow. really 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 cool accessory bluetooth is also awesome yeah oh yeah i don't have a house and i think i'm gonna buy a new ct26 just so i can put a bluetooth on it yeah because, hey what when i'm cleaning up and I got that uh, 20 foot hose on there. I'm the laziest person on the planet. I want to turn it on and off. Okay. So I'm going to wrap this up. And I am going to ask you, I'm going to start to have like two or three questions at the end here. And this is going to be one that I'm going to always ask. If you go to only have one Festool tool the rest of your life, only one, which one would it be? The new track saw. Man, I, I, boy, I owe you a lot of money next weekend, don't I? Yeah, no. Holy, holy it would because it's, it, it, with, with what I do, uh, the types of projects that I like to do, um, the track's all 100%.
Now the Domino is great, and I would be very hard to be without. But I use the track saw a lot more than I use the Domino. Very interesting, because you know what? That would be mine. I, I, I always have to have a track saw. Yeah. Jeez. Huh. Too cool. By the way, that question, what's your favorite Festool accessory? That was asked amongst us here at Festool probably about 10 years ago. And I had two that I, everybody says, oh, I, I would say the clamp or someone would say, oh, this. And uh, my two that I can't work without is the LA32 system and the Festival. Uh, See? I guess that, that is an accessory. Yeah. Yep. That is yeah. an accessory. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Those are my two favorite. Cool. Well, I am going, I know how much time is of value to you and your family. So I am going to wrap this up. And I want to say the bill you want to add. Uh, yeah, the bill is in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Too cool. I I'm just kidding. No, it's just uh, thank you for having me on. I was super excited to do this. I just can't wait till I can actually come up there and hang out in the in the actual shop and we can do it together. And we're definitely going to have you back. Uh, we've already been talking about it. I can't thank you enough. Um, you're one of our great festival advocates out there. We appreciate all the, the stuff you do with us. So thank you for being here for uh, Festival Shop Talk episode number two. And these will live eventually on Apple and Spotify and a couple other places you can get podcasts. So we're right. just getting testing going now, but it, it'll be on there for good. So awesome. Jason, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Talk to you soon. Okay.